Hey, what's going on guys? I just picked up one of these Burris scopes and I wanted to do a quick unboxing and I'm going to mount it here too. Um, what I picked up was a Burris Signature HD 5-25 by 50. Um, it's the first focal plane. And this one actually has the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor reticle for the drop chart for um, the 140 ELDs. The reason why I picked this one up, um, there's a few left on Brownells. I'll put a link in the description, but when I built my 22 Creedmoor, I wasn't happy with the VX Freedom that I put on it. So I yanked my VX5 off of my 6.5 Creedmoor and um, put it on the 22 Creedmoor and then kind of left me without a scope for the 6.5. Um, I saw these were on sale and I figured I'd pick one up. I've heard great reviews on them for being a Chinese made scope somebody definitely did some reverse engineering on these things because they seem like they're pretty good quality um, locking turrets and I don't know if I mentioned it is a it's, it's illuminated so and what I like about the illumination between each um, setting for brightness there's an off offsetting so you turn there you're on your brightest setting six but rather than having to go the whole way around to shut it off you can go either way to shut it off which i think is a nice little setting if you're even with your hunting with it um you can kind of just have it off and then depending on your light setting just turn it on when you see something coming in rather than having it on all the time. Neat little feature. Um, I haven't, obviously, other than holding it up to my window and looking outside with it, I haven't had it on the gun to see the clarity with it, but from what I saw at first glance, it looked pretty good, so I'm anxious to try it out. But we're gonna mount it on my 6.5 Creedmoor, like I said. Um, Turn the camera around here in a second and show you this rifle. I already um, used my Wheeler levels to level it. Um, the one that's not in here is clamped on the barrel currently to ensure my gun's level in the stock. I mean in the, the gun rest. And then actually Wheeler, I commented on one of their posts or something. And they sent me this fat wrench for free. I normally use this is my torque wrench, but I figured I'd try the uh, fat wrench out. See how I like it. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around now and show you what we have going on here. This is my 22 Creedmoor on a um, 98 miles of action. As you can see, it's my Bureau of Propaganda edition. Wanted to do something different. I actually call it, get the camera around here. I actually call it my 6.5 Freedom War. Put the Liberty Bell on there. And that is just because of my barrel, the muzzle brake. The reason why it looks like a bell is this is a old school Pfeiffer barrel. They've been out of business for years. This is probably a barrel back from the 50s or 60s. I'm not quite sure when they went out of business, but somebody took the blank and they, they tapered it. And generally when they do that, they leave the end that's closest to the center, larger diameter, and then you would just cut it off to your desired length when you're done. But being that it's like a old school barrel obsolete and the fact let me see if I can get it to zoom here and the fact that it said Pfeiffer on the end of it I really didn't want to get rid of that so what I did was um, I reamed back to get a nice crown back into the barrel here somewhere probably not back that far but I reamed back to get past 
the potential run out on this barrel. That's why they always recommend you cutting like an inch or two off of your blanks. So I ran back into the barrel to um, get to good riflings and then just kind of recontoured what they had left here into a bell shape, put it in my mill, and then I, um, my dial indicator, I put some ports in it for a muzzle break. Definitely different from what I normally do, but in order to preserve the fact that it said Pfeiffer on the outside, I kind of wanted to do that. Something different. You might like it. You might think it's ugly, but I like it, so that's all that matters. Um, I forgot to mention, this is a 98 action. I said that, but this is a VZ24. Um, it's one of my favorite, and it's the most renowned action as far as quality if you're working with uh, surplus actions. So I'm going to move the camera back around here again, and we're going to plop this scope on here real quick and try out this Wheeler fat ring. Generally, I, for my eye at least, I can usually just center the turrets between the two mounts, and it's usually pretty good. Pretty good for eye relief. Check real quick. Turn the power down so it's easier to see through. I think that's going to be good there. I'm going to grab my level back. Get this kind of close. Um, you're going to have to keep watching it because as you tighten down your mounts, it tends to twist a little bit. I lap these rings a little bit, so it's good to mark front and rear so you don't mix those up once you lap them. So there's that. I should have a T handle around here somewhere. What did I do with it? Hmm. There it is, my Wheeler T-handle. I'm just going to run these down with this before I grab my uh, fat wrench. I don't know if you can see that from where you're at, but when I started to tighten that down, it um, started to move my um, scope out of level. There's a little bit of trial and error here to get this where you want it, and it actually stay. I'm not tightening these very tight. I'm just doing like hand tight to kind of get my scope to stay in position. And then I'll come back with the torque wrench to tighten these up. You can see it's wanting to walk on me. So sometimes you just have to overcompensate. Um, my bubble's touching the right side of the line now, so maybe before you tighten it up, you want to rotate your scope so it's kind of 
touching the left side of the line and then once you tighten it down, hopefully it'll be centered. So now I was wanting to walk the other way. There we go, it's starting to move how I want it to. It's pretty close there. So I'm gonna get out the fat wrench now. T15 Torx. Um, we can get it to clear up on this you pull out and then you turn clockwise to increase it counterclockwise to back it off generally say 18 uh, inch pounds for scope rings I'm just gonna bump it up to 20 because it's a easier line to read on here And still, you hear that click, that's when you know it's uh, to the correct spec. That one's good. That one's good. So now we're tight. And then, nice little tip. Um, don't leave your torque wrench set. Always back it off to zero. It takes the pressure off the spring. And will ensure better accuracy for your, um, your torque wrench. So, yeah, that's really all there is to it. Um... With these couple tools from Wheeler, it makes it super easy to um, monoscope at home. You don't necessarily have to take it to a gun shop to have it done. Um, you can feel pretty confident in yourself as long as you have these levels. That way you're ensuring your scope's level to your action. And um, torquing your screws is always a good idea. Then you have equal tightness on everything. And one other last item that I'm gonna put in the description is this Tipton gun vise that's on the stand. I love this thing. I take it outside when I'm breaking in a barrel. I'm able to clean right at the bench. Makes it super easy. And I've been using it inside here for cleaning, mounting scopes, stuff like that. You could use it for glass bedding. I don't, I have two vices that I generally used for that just to fold it a little bit better and then I have it at my bench so I have a table surrounding it so but yeah like I said I'll put a link in the description to these products that I just used and um, definitely suggest picking them up if you want to start into mounting your own scopes thanks guys